welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello. I make videos about books and Harry Potter and just general fandom stuff because it's all that my life revolves around. <laughs> so today's video might be a little bit of a different one, but it's a video that I've been thinking about doing for a really long time. I thought I would talk about some books that I don't talk about enough on this channel, and that is middle grade novels, 9 to 12, as we would have in Waterstones in the UK, kind of 9 to 12 books books that are aimed at a slightly younger audience than I would usually talk about. I have people on this channel that are in that age bracket and I have people on this channel that are parents who are asking me for advice for their children who are in that age bracket and books they can read. I think if you can understand and comprehend and read something then you should just read whatever you want but I'm not saying that we give Sarah J Mass to 10 year olds. Do you get what I mean? You know, let's not give 9 year olds Fifty Shades of Grey. Right. So I thought I would recommend some of my favourite middle grade books, some books that I have read that are considered middle grade that are absolutely brilliant and I want everyone to read them and they're just the best books so please, please do that. And even if you're not in that age range you should read them anyway because they're all bloody brilliant. So the first one that we have is The Thing About Jellyfish by Ali Benjamin and this book is very sad and made me cry for all of the book but it's fantastic and I think it's really important. And this book is about a girl called Susie and her best friend Franny has just died. She actually drowned. She finds out in school um, that that's what's happened and she becomes very fixated on what it was that made it happen. She believes that it's a jellyfish. She comes to the conclusion that she got stung by a jellyfish and couldn't actually and swim out of the with the pain. You know, this book, it, it does focus on some not very nice things, so maybe kind of read it with caution, but it is in the 9 to 12 section. And I think it's really important because it talks about grief and how different people deal with certain things and how different people deal with their grief and kind of trying to make come to terms with it because I think that's what's important about this book. It's kind of someone who has never experienced grief before trying to wrap their head around the fact that people die and I think that's really important because it's the thing that we will all experience. I was kind of the same age as she was when it happened to me the first time. You know, you can't even wrap your head around it as an adult really so being a child and doing that is difficult. And this book is, it does that really well and is pretty good at having that and I think that it's brilliant and I think it's it's just so good and I would recommend it. I'd sort of put it at the higher end of the 9 to 12 section, 11, 10, 11 kind of thing. It's a bit more advanced than someone that's just come out of the younger books to then go straight into it, but it's fantastic. I can't recommend it enough, honestly. I just, it's so good. Then we have the Magisterium series by Holly Black and Cassandra Clare. This is the third book in the series. The first one is like right at the bottom of a pile and I just, I'm really lazy. <laughs> so this book is about a boy called Callum. He's known he's magical, but his dad hates the magisterium where they, they train and learn. So he tells Callum that when he has to take the entry exam, he has to fail it. Callum fails it, but he fails it so badly, they know he did it deliberately and they let him in anyway. And it's everything from there. And this book has quite a lot of twists and turns that ruin my life all the time. Every time I read the ne next book in the series I just don't know where it's gonna go and it, it ruins me. These books are fantastic, I think they're really good, I think it's a really really good introduction book to like good series to higher up like YA stuff and kind of more in-depth fantasy series. Again I'd say higher end because of kind of how they're written and stuff but I think they're really good and they're a really good kind of like transition series into higher up YA stuff but um it's brilliant, a really good series and I would definitely recommend it. I'm not gonna get too much into it a Harry Potter. Just please just read Harry Potter. <laughs> Harry Potter is actually considered a middle grade novel. It is in the 9 to 12 section. I wouldn't personally put it in the 9 to 12 section, especially Goblet of Fire to Deathly Hallows. They're really good. Um, if you haven't read Harry Potter, if you don't know about Harry Potter, the boy called Harry, who was brought up by his aunt and uncle, thought he was pretty normal, finds out on his 11th birthday that actually he's magical and gets invited to go to a school called Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry by a half giant called Hagrid and he goes to school and lots of things go down. There's seven books and kind of eight if you consider Cursed Child but Cursed Child is written as a script because it's a play and it's my favourite series in the whole world ever and please read Harry Potter. <laughs> Thank you. Then we have Wonder by RJ Palacio which is a book about a boy called August who has a facial deformity and he's never been to a real school before but he is going into fifth grade for the first time and it's kind of kind of how people deal with him and how people treat him because of this deformity but kind of rising above that and it's such a good book like please 
please read this book it's beautiful it's amazing it just touches so many things goes against you know how you know how people treat you and just to prove that you're so much more than what people think of you and you're so much more than how you look and that there's nothing wrong with looking a bit different because what even is different anyway what even is normal and i love that so much and this book's brilliant please read this book <laughs> then we have george by alex gino which is about george who was born a boy but is, was actually born in the wrong body and is actually a girl george wants to play charlotte in the school's production of charlotte's web but gets told that she can't play charlotte because she's a boy obviously that's not cool gender stereotypes it, you know it, it challenges gender stereotypes conventional norms what people think is normal what we you know what people kind of just go through every day without thinking about and saying what's normal and stuff but this book's brilliant like it really challenges those things it's like well you know what is that and kind of dealing with those things and exploring gender identity and yourself and kind of learning more about yourself and who you are and kind of knowing who you are and how people react to that and coming out and stuff so this book's brilliant I read this book recently out of this pile, it's the most recent book I've read and I love it so much so read this book too please. <laughs> then we have The Many Worlds of Albie Bright by Christopher Edge which is a book similar to the thing about jellyfish and it's about a boy called Albie whose mum has died and it's kind of dealing with that and coming to terms with that and again different ways to deal with things and he attempts to send himself through time and space to bring back his mum to see her again and it's kind of that kind of thing and it's a book you know it focuses on like quantum physics and stuff but it's really good absolutely fantastic again it deals with issues and themes that children do deal with and kind of the different ways that people do deal with that and I think this book is also very brilliant and I would also very much recommend it and then we have a boy called hope by Lara Williamson which is about a boy called Dan Hope who has like a list of things that he wants to happen and one of those things it says the biggest dream of all is I want my dad to love me and it's a book about family and family life and experiences and I just feel like it's really good with books about family because there aren't that many and I think it's really good to kind of explore those family themes and that kind of thing especially at that age also we have candy floss by jacqueline wilson i can't find my copy of it for some reason so here's a picture and this was my favorite book as a kid and remains to be one of my favorite middle grade books to this day and it's about a girl called floss who her mum and her stepdad and her little brother are going to be moving to australia but she decides she's going to stay with her dad and her dad runs a chip shop he's not doing too well financially and it's kind of living with him and getting to know him better but also kind of family and money and that kind of thing and I remember reading this on my 11th birthday I spent the whole day reading it it was my favorite present that year and I loved it so much it was brilliant and I think it's a fantastic novel I would definitely recommend it brilliant middle grade one again deals with some really important themes and stuff and touches upon family and it's, just, it's really good <laughs> and finally the Percy Jackson series by Rick Rudd and which I'm sure loads of people know about but if you don't Percy Jackson's about a guy called Percy who finds out that he's half demigod he is the son of Poseidon really good series honestly it's absolutely fantastic again I think it's a really good series to kind of transition from middle grade fantasy into YA fantasy and it's just it's a really really good series I love it and I think that they're really good so that's also one I would recommend so yeah so those are some of my favorite middle grade novels I would recommend all of these I think they're brilliant I think they have some really good themes and issues and touch upon some really 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 good things which I think it's important to read about and I think that books can kind of really educate kids as well especially kind of the younger they are if you sort of show them especially in quite a lot of these books where there are things that everyone deals with and not everyone is the same and everyone has different things to deal with the kind of the younger someone is to learn and understand those things the better it is you know and i think that's really important in the past couple of years how many incredible middle grade novels have come out which deal with so many different things than middle grade novels dealt with when i was a kid i'd love to know some of your favorite middle grade novels i still read them i read a lot of them and i would love to know your recommendations down below if you are new here i make videos a couple of times a week so if you like to stick around and join us then you can do that and as usual all of my social medias will be in the description down below and very excitingly which is you're probably gonna look at me and be like this is what you're all about i have managed to get rid of the pesky little underscore that was in all of my usernames so on instagram and twitter and youtube and uh, not youtube instagram twitter and tumblr where it was not just a clean round the road because the round the road was taken obviously whoever had it has changed their usernames or deactivated or something so now it's just round the road on everything it matches i love it so yeah so twitter tumblr instagram Run on the road, at run on the road, find me on there, Goodreads, run on the road, my website, runontheroad.com. It all matches. 
I love it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you're doing really, really, really well, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.